Good evening again. We are starting the formal meeting now. Thank you. Welcome to the Bedford Faltham Hanwet Area Forum meeting. Well, the first item on the agenda we have is communications. Apologies for absence, declarations of interest, and any other communication. So far, we have one apology from Councillor Fermahan. Yes, Councillor Tuck. Uh, apologies uh, for lateness for Councillor Ellen Joseph. Okay. Noted. Any other apologies? Declaration of interest? Lateness? Item 2 on the agenda, minutes of the meeting held on 8th of December 2022. The minutes are on pages 7 and 8 of the agenda. Can I ask for any amendments from those present at the meeting, especially the members, councillors? Any amendments? Any matters arising? Can I agree the minutes? No. Agreed? Item three on the agenda, if you have community responses. Councillor Kamran, can you take a seat? Please. So the first response is on Muller Roundabout. It's update from Tim Hurley. on Muller Roundabout and also the alleyway that leads from Muller Roundabout uh, going west uh, alongside the A316. So Muller's Roundabout, as we know, has been prone to graffiti for a number of years. I think there's some graffiti which, following discussion with TfL, is agreed to be left, which is the graffiti underneath the A13, A316. And then there's graffiti on the roundabout itself. So we've been working with TfL, um, who are clearing the graffiti, I think generally within 28 days, but a little bit longer. They do accept their responsibility to clear it, and they are working on doing it in a timely manner. There were some actions which we've agreed with TfL regarding signage on the slip road coming down the A316 towards Muller's Roundabout. So it goes from a 50 to a 30, which is a fairly steep reduction in speed, and they've agreed to put some warning signs there. Because going from 50 to 30 on a roundabout, which has a, a limited uh, visual display has become a problem, but they've accepted that. They've also accepted that they're going to look at the crossing point there on the roundabout to see if they can put something more formal in, uh, possibly signalised, but they can't make any promises as yet. We continue to work on the graffiti, and there is a CCTV camera which is on the, the list of um, desired points for CCTV to go up, which uh, Hanslow Councillor are currently doing. And we're also looking at a more long-term project, we're possibly in conjunction with Muller's Dairy, about a mural on the roundabout and all of the pillars to discourage future graffiti. Uh, we've done this in other locations and we found it to be successful. Uh, especially if we get the mural right, it, it creates a sense of pride um, and it connects the community with the, the roundabout itself. There is also then the long footway, which goes all the way from Muller's Roundabout um, towards the borough boundary. We are in discussion with TfL on this one. It's not adopted, but everybody accepts that there is a responsibility to ensure that it's kept clean, the vegetation is cut back, the footway is safe, and also the tunnel which goes underneath the A316, which has two broken lighting points, an acceptable level um, of, let's call it assorted fly-tipped items, uh, is dealt with. We have a meeting on Wednesday with TfL where hopefully we're going to clarify the ownership of that. 
We're also going to look at doing a, a clean-up as part of the Great British Spring Clean. That's volunteers from Hounslow Highways and, and the community if they'd like to join us, just to give it a, a good clean. But that won't resolve the longer-term issues, which is the footpath, the condition. There's also at least one footbridge there which requires uh, annual inspections and maintenance as well. Thank you, Tim. Any questions, Councillor? Uh, thank you, Tim. Could you, seeing as everyone's here, blimey, it's a bit echoey, uh, could, could you give people a, a little update on where we stand with the uh, glass panel on the footbridge after all the effort that we've put in um, to try and get that resolved? Could you just give us a where we stand? Thank you. Yep. So the, the new footbridge that went in as part of the town centre improvements, glass panel's been out since... Well, far too long, I think, is probably the best term, uh, at least until since probably even August last year, maybe even before. Before. Um, so we, we've done a make safe. The footbridge is owned by the council, and we're, we're working on plans to update it. We have put, or trying to put in place, a BAPA agreement with Network Rail, which is an agreement for us to work over their railway and replace the grass panel. Um, we've got some quotes. Uh, the prices were initially very, very high. We've managed to get that down um, through just intelligent ways of working, which is minimising any potential effect on the railway line. We're just waiting for a final agreement from uh, essentially the budget holders. Um, and once that's in place, we can agree the final BAP agreement with Network Rail and then plan in having the glass panel repaired. So we looked at the method of working to do that. It's fairly straightforward. Um, it's just where we're operating that makes it a bit difficult. I'd love to give a timeline. I'd like to say, provided we get the budget through, it should be done in the next six weeks, eight weeks, possibly sooner. The manufacturing timescales for glass panel is quite short. We just need to get those two agreements in place um, regarding the budget and the BAP agreement. Thank you, Tim. Any more questions from members? Um, next one, we have update on Baber Bridge from Rob Heslop. Hi, yeah, yeah, uh, Hi Rob, Rob Heslop from uh, traffic, uh, traffic Transport and Parking. Um, so the question about Baber Bridge and the narrow footway, um, it's a difficult one because it, to, to widen the, the footway, we need to either, either to widen the bridge or to, to put in a, a parallel bridge next to the bridge. So, because the, the carriageways, the, the road is so narrow, we can't widen the footway without affecting the traffic. So, colleagues are starting to look at uh, options to do that, and that will be done, that will commence this, this year. So, um, it's going to be a, a, a multi-year sort of year project, this one, because of the complexity of it, but that, that work is, is starting and to look at, to look at options. Thank you. Um, any question? Um, Councillor Tuck. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, we have uh, a few cycleways and uh, active travel programs coming in this way. And Baver Bridge is an uh, important link between Feltham and Hounslow. Um, at, at this moment, uh, um, if a bus passes from there, a car has to wait on the other side. It will not be safe for the cyclists to move from there. And um, if we are trying to have a cycle lane in there and a pavement, it will become very, very difficult. So um, uh, ultimately, we will have to find the ways to widen the bridge. Uh, but since we raised it last time, I don't see anything tangible done to, to find the ways to, to do that. It's just ideas we are looking at. So, as I said, it's 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 part of our uh, the priority route, uh, cycle route five, Staines Road between Hamslow and, and Feltham. So it is a we are and we are looking at our colleagues are delivering the, the the whole route in sections. Unfortunately, Baber Bridge is probably the hardest section to, to deliver because the road is, as you said, the road is so narrow. So it is finding ways and to to widen the, either widen the bridge or my understanding is it's probably more likely that there would be a parallel a new bridge parallel to the road 
uh, on the north side of, 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 um, of Staines Road. But that, that need, they need to look into to options. I think they're just commissioning some options to, to, to start looking at designs about how that can be done. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a time scale for how long that would take to, to deliver, but I can show you that it, it, they are looking at those options just to, to what, what, what can be done at that point. Supplementary, yeah, go on. When can we expect a, a, a solid plan like what we're going to have there? Um, if I can, I'll take that away and, and uh, talk to colleagues. It is, as I say, it's part of the program. That design work is part of our program for 23 24. So I suspect the actual delivery will be beyond that and subject to funding. Um, but I'll take that query away and ask colleagues to update on, on the, once they have a program. As I say, it's an important, it's a very important link, but it's a very difficult link to deliver because of the, the, the nature of the, the road with the bridges. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Councillor Akram, please. Do, do you uh, have any budget, what is the budget of this, the project? And then I think I was told the office that maybe the design has been completed in April, May. Have you done any design, anything so, so far? Um, so I don't, I don't have the figures for the, for the budget for next year on, off the top of my head, but it, it's in our program of, of in, our, in our traffic team's program of works to, to, do, to do those designs, those initial out options and, and designs. So I don't think that works complete yet but we, we should end up with some options and, and that'll obviously be looked at for feasibility and, and cost and I'm sure there'll be a, a, a consultation or engagement on, around that you know, when they've got, a, got options to, to share. But again, I can take that away and, and ask for a, if, we, if we can uh, bring a programme back and, and share that. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Any, any more questions from members? can't see any hand, so, okay. Thank you, Rob. Item four on the agenda, we have update from local police. We have uh, Sergeant John William to make the presentation. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is John Williams, I'm the sergeant. I cur cur currently cover the whole of Feltham um, at the moment. Um, obviously in terms of policing at the moment, uh, I'm sure everyone's aware of the case report that's come out recently. Um, we're not in a good place. Clearly we're not in a good place. Um, I think the commissioner has, has come on board and apologised to everybody in regards to what's happening. I will do it from a local mm -hmm. area point of view. Apologise that we are in the state that we're in. Uh, it's uh, not a good place to be uh, from the, a very local level and a very low level it's a very embarrassing place to be it's not somewhere that any of us would want to be expect to be and a lot of the things that have been raised the stuff that we have been raising uh, repeatedly to our leadership and our management as well so it's not a surprise a lot of what's in there um, and there's a lot of work to be involved in it and the simple answer in regards to it is it's not something that we can do alone. Uh, and I come here to every community session, to all our community sessions, and, and basically say that we don't police on your behalf, we police with you as a community. Um, and the only way that we can get better, and the only way that we can tackle the problems in our community is by working with the community. Um, so it's nice to see people here, and it's nice to see the community come out, but I'd love to see thousands of people here, not, you know, 50 people. You know, and it's uh, something that we push a lot and uh, we work with the council, the community safety team editor here, uh, to try and do a lot more within the communities to tackle the problems that we've got. Uh, in terms of the four, five wards that we've got, um, sorry, I'll just need to grab my thing. In terms of our current... Um, Staffing uh, in the ward, we are very low, is a simple answer. Um, and we have been for quite a considerable number of uh, months, perhaps a whole year, uh, and also uh, had a lot of abstractions over the last year, which has, has really impacted on our 
uh, ability to tackle local issues. Um, my SLT have asked me to basically pass on what they're doing around it. Uh, they've uh, asked me to state that um, the MPT strand, the neighborhood strand that we currently work for, uh, has had to cope with a reduced number of resources uh, across the whole strand. So it's not just us here, it's across the whole of uh, West Area. Uh, and this has reduced our ability to be visible and to engage with the communities and to tackle some of the issues on the wards. Uh, this has been impacted massively by uh, a re reduction of numbers that we've had across our response teams. So we're having to backfill for them. Uh, a number of obviously high profile things, the Queen's funeral coming up, the, the King's coronation, uh, Extinction Rebellion, all of these things draw us, draw our, our team officers away uptown and us having to cover them. There are plans in place. Um, there is a new superintendent who's going to be joining us as of the beginning of next month, uh, Superintendent Anil Puri. Uh, he um, will take full responsibility for Hounslow as a superintendent. Uh, so each area now within the West Area has a, its own superintendent uh, and I'm sure he will first thing we'll be doing is looking at the resources that he's got uh, because we are woefully short at the moment. Um, however, the officers that we do have here are working really hard to try and tackle some of the problems that we've got uh, and some of the problems that are on the wards. Uh, and I know that we're working very hard with editor, the community safety team, uh, and with the council to try and do the best we can to tackle some of these issues. Um, the priority for us at the moment is obviously violence, especially serious youth violence, uh, violence against women and girls. That has to be our priority. Uh, and so that is where we are focusing most of our resources at the moment. Yes, we would like to tackle all the problems that we've got in the wards, all the other issues, but that has to take priority because these are our kids that are being injured, being stabbed, uh, stuff like that. And that's something that just can't happen and I won't let happen. And, and feel passionately about as a father, um, we have to get on top of that. But again, that, that calls for you as the community uh, to pass us the information as to who's doing what, for you as a community to bring attention or challenge us as to what's going on with it uh, and ask what we're doing around it. Okay. Um, there are some packs here with a breakdown just at the front there, which actually breaks down individually, ward by ward, what we've done. Uh, the main areas for bed font uh, this, year, this um, term, again, being very short, there's a PCSO Sally Smith is my only resource on bed font at the moment. Um, so we're having to obviously pull resources from Felton North, from Hamworth to cover her ward. Her main focus has been two areas, basically Bethany Way uh, has been causing a lot of issues. Uh, and we're working with the council. We've uh, safeguarded a couple of individuals in there and there's a plan in place to uh, they're doing up the estate, looking at who's in there and trying to move people on that are causing the issues there. Uh, and I know that Lewin Terrace and Page Road has, has been brought up quite a lot. Uh, and I think there's an event, uh, is it today? Or was it? It was today. Uh, we did a walk and talk around it uh, to try and bring up some ideas to how to tackle those issues. Um, bed font pits continues to be a problem, especially with motorbikes and stuff like that. Uh, we are trying to work with our traffic department to try and get some off-road motorbikes in, the, in and around that area, try and target some of the people on the mopeds that are causing issues around there. Um, Feltham North hasn't been too bad recently. Uh, we've got a few issues in and around a, a couple of addresses, particularly uh, low-level drug dealing, but nothing major uh, has been happening around Feltham North, but that is also our, our our only ward which has got uh, full numbers, so no coincidence. Um, Felton West uh, continues obviously to be a major issue, especially in and around the town centre. Um, we have had uh, additional funding for the last six months uh, to put extra resources, I say extra resources, putting in um, people on overtime to come in and, and do high-vis patrols in the area, had a number of initiatives over the Christmas period, had extra people in to do undo issues there. And we've got some additional funding uh, and teams helping on us to try and tackle some of the ASB issues. At, uh, and we work with the, the town team there, the CCTV, to try and identify some of the individuals. Um, there was obviously uh, the very serious incident that took place last Thursday, the stabbing that took place. Um, investigation is still ongoing in regards to that. Uh, and there was a Section 60 that was put in place on Thursday um, to try and uh, disperse some of the issues. We also dealt with an affray that night as well. 
a uh, couple of individuals have been identified from that and will be arrested and dealt with in, uh, in due course for that matter. Um, Hamworth Park is probably um, our main issue around that tends to be actually around the park area itself. Um, the loss of the park wardens at the moment, we can't say how that's going to affect us, but obviously it's going to have an effect. Um, that's something that we will work with the council team around, how best we can manage that impact and how, what that's going to sort of look like over the coming months. Obviously with summer coming out, more people using the parks, uh, there may be more issues arise. We will try and identify areas that we can work around that. But the one thing we tend to lack a little bit around that area is just information as to where or if the specific times things are happening. So if you're in that area, like any of the parks, and you see stuff happening and, and you want us to deal, let us know because you know, without that information, there's li limited stuff that we, we don't know it's happening or where it's happening. It's difficult for us to, to put um, plans in place to try and combat that. Hamworth Village, uh, as it is now called, um, continues to be probably one of our diff most difficult wards. Uh, issues around Butts Farm, uh, we've just secured a new camera uh, that's going to go back up into Butts Farm. We had one previously, it got taken away, we've managed to secure it back again now. That's gone in place today, uh, should be backing it up and running. Uh, and we're doing uh, several initiatives. It's been an initiative running every month, at least twice a month, with the community safety team uh, and the housing association there to do uh, weapon sweeps, to do community visits. Uh, they're currently visiting the youth clubs and the adult club as well, I believe, is that correct? Um, and we're also looking at some um, community protection notices um, to some individuals that are in there. But it, it has always historically been a, a difficult place for us to manage. It still is a difficult place. There are still uh, groups of uh, particularly teenage boys who are causing carnage, particularly around Norman House. Uh, it is something we're aware of. We're trying to tackle it with the council, uh, put plans in place to deal with that. Um, other than that, um, there's not much else I can say. Um, I'm happy to obviously take any questions from anyone, if anyone wants. Councillor Bart. Thanks for the update. Thank you, Chair. Um, regarding Lewin uh, Terrace and Page Road, yeah. I know there's been a sort of, um, it's been ongoing issues there, haven't there, regarding ASB. Um, have you got any particular update? Because I, I, I realise there was a meeting today between the Council and Catholic ha Catalyst Housing. I, I can't if answer that. I believe Edison might be able to give an update. You? After this, yeah. Edison can okay. give an update. Yeah. I wasn't there. I, was, I literally just come in today. Right, so okay. Just because it's, on, it's ongoing and we're getting yeah. quite a lot of complaints from residents. I'm quite keen to make sure we've got some kind of plan in action. Yeah, there is a place. There's, there's stuff that so Edison will go through that because she's right. leading on that one. Okay, so. thank you. I wanted to ask one about the update on the recent incident, but you updated on it yeah. in Feltimus. Uh, next one is Councillor Mitchell. It sort of is related to that, Chair, but uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Sergeant, for um, the way you responded last week, last Thursday, and, and the team. That was very much appreciated. Uh, I just finished an estate inspection with Councillor Asim, and uh, it was quite a scene to come across, but um, PC Hannah Goldie and everyone did a very good job. Um, related to that, is, can you, have you got any intelligence on whether how much of this is um, to do with county lines? Because this is a problem that we were dealing with, had seemingly was going away and almost gone away, and it's come back. I know there's other in, uh, issues in the town centre with the blocks, uh, Beginia House, Azalea House in particular, where, where, where these problems are existing at the moment. But what is the intelligence on where this is at the root cause of this is? Is this county lines? Is this Ealing? Where are these people coming from? Why is it coming back to our town centre? Uh, from our point of view, it, it appears to be local use. Cause, uh, yeah, yeah. So it, it, uh, there's a number of, like, unfortunately, it tends to be generational. You know, a group move in, sort of 13, 14, 15, start a low level drug thing, it then escalates. Um, like all these things when it comes to uh, drug dealing, most of, and most of the serious youth violence tends to be around drug dealing, um, there's limited intel that we have around it. So we can identify the, and, and tackle them on a regular basis. Uh, there's a gentleman that's been given a CPN recently for Beginia House. 
there's another uh, couple who say the two in regards to the affray who will be looking to try and put a, a community behaviour order in. Um, all of these, where we identify them, it's just a slow and very long and slow process. Yeah, we've, we've, yeah, we, uh, and we've, we've, we've acted on intelligence where we've recovered uh, quite a large amount of drugs from the House, which is information passed on to us uh, by, uh, by residents. Um, as soon as we get info, like I've said, as soon as we get intelligence about it, then we will look to try and, and tackle those particular problems. I don't necessarily believe it's county lines. I believe it's more low level, oh, I'm not saying low level, um, it's drug dealing but by local youths. Uh, and it seems to be uh, the, of the attacks we have is local use on local use rather than necessarily people from outside coming in. Um, that's not the intelligence picture that we've seen as of yet. But we do work, we've had quite a lot of uh, work with the gangs unit, the West Area Gangs Unit, who are over here a lot, um, and also the um, VSU, the Violence Suppression Unit, are over here at the moment as well to try and tackle this problem. We will put you know, I constantly bid to try and get, get extra resources. We'll try and get the CSG. We'll try and wherever we possibly can to get these extra resources in. Um, it's not at the level, unfortunately, based on uh, the other bits with the West Area. Ealing still tends to have more serious incidents, so they tend to get more resources. Uh, it's just it's a constant resource battle, unfortunately. Yeah. Councillor Gurung. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Hope you can hear this one here. Um, right, uh, checking at the five ward, I've seen that robbery is almost average. Twenty percent is above. Yeah, every ward is above the twenty houses has been robbed. So, what you have done for this robbery, and what is the prevention that you are working? And then what is the message that you do send out to the resident? And um, have you done anything that's, you know, um, to claiming the, uh, this robbery which has been taken place? Uh, is that any information, please? Um, so in terms of robbery, um, initiatives that have done in terms of that are a lot of it has been um, school child and other school child type robberies. So the school team work a lot in, in the schools about education and stuff around safety of themselves. Uh, I, where they've been identified, any robbers that are identified, obviously dealt with by, uh, we have a, what's called a BRIST team. BRIST team who, uh, will they take primacy on all robberies. Uh, the team where there is a robbery will, uh, we also, from the neighborhood point of view, We'll look at all robberies, burglaries, any serious incident, uh, and if where we identify any individuals, uh, we will pass it up, do identifications, uh, do anniversary visits, stuff around that. Um, robbery tends to be, a, it goes in spikes, so you tend to get a spike, one person ends up getting arrested, and then it drops down, and then it'll go back up. Um, there was a, a couple of, um, very nasty incidents where um, a couple of um, single females were targeted um, recently. Um, I believe uh, one person has been identified from that. I'm not sure if they've been arrested yet. I've, I haven't been here for the last couple of days, so I just want to confirm that. Um, wherever it's possible, then you know, obviously it's a, it's a priority, uh, not just for us, but for the West Area as well, and we'll tackle those issues. It's, it tends to be, again, you know, it's, it's, the more people we have out and the more people we can get on the streets, the more it disperses that type of crime. You know, so again, it's, you know, lack of resources obviously doesn't help in those type of offences um, from escalating. And that's where obviously we will push and push heavily to try and get more resources on the ground. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, thank you on that one. It's quite clear. Um, but I want to know that, or looking at your report, mm -hmm. there is nothing about the burglary. We got uh, lots of household has been uh, burglar, mm -hmm. and then they have reported, but uh, it is not on the, your report list. So uh, do you have any data, any report that say you, um, they come, come across to you 
In it terms of what, sir? Sorry, I'm just trying. To, what is it? What it's is a robbery. I mean, you know, these the house robbery. Do you want you want to know how many burglars how many, have taken place? Yeah, robbery. Yeah, num, uh, yeah, normally, the how many household been reported to you, and what is the uh, outcome of the report? I haven't got that. I haven't got that information on you. I'll have to have mm -hmm. a have a look sir, and um, get back to you with that. Okay. I don't have it to hand, unfortunately, so I'll have to have a look and I'll, say, I'll pass it back for you. Yeah, I heard that there is an increasing number of the, let's say, BME group. Uh, no, it, um, burglary at the moment is still um, sitting, I think, I believe it's lower than last year at the moment. Uh, it, again, it fluctuates, so we will probably expect to see a bit of a spike uh, in the next coming months as uh, weather starts to get hotter, uh, gets warmer. People tend to leave windows open, stuff like that, so it tends to be a bit of an opportunist one from that side of it. Uh, coming into winter, people go away. It tends to go in, in spikes, but we will have we have initiatives across the year. So we do winter nights, autumn nights. Uh, the only thing, the only one that we don't we did summer nights. I think the only one we don't do is spring nights for some reason. But um, we will have an initiative that will do that, and we'll focus on that burglary for, at that time. Okay, Councilor, through you, Chair, um, um, I think uh, we would like to ask the. Um, that's you know what message that you know, he would like to send to prevent the burglary uh, in the house. So I think through chair, yeah, we, we need to send the message to the resident that you know how they can prevent. We have a number. We, we do a number of initiatives uh, sent out across myself uh, and with the council uh, on when it comes to burglaries. I will speak to editor to see what we've got, uh, and I'll speak to our. Um, department to, to send it out and then I'll, I'll send it through to yourself so it's uh, a pass across to the wards. Thank you officer. Councillor Akram please. Thank you Sergeant giving the information and then mostly about the Faltham North mm -hmm. okay, there is no and many issue but they have a drug issue. Yeah <clears throat> but we are we are receiving many calls on the weekend Friday Saturday many people are selling the drug mm -hmm. near the Faltham Samlihar yeah in the park side and the, on the Hunter Road as well, yeah. Yeah, any, any, any update, any, any, did you take any actions? What we can, we can control of this area? Because uh, last two, three months, there is a lot of people, they are complaining that Feltham Samli Hall is main hub. Why are, why are not taking any action of this one? Because that's not the information that's been passed to us. It's a simple answer. Uh, we have uh, intel uh, um, passed to us about a couple of residences close to this area, but Feltham Assembly Hall uh, in particular isn't one that's coming up on our radar. So uh, that information is being passed to us, is this, uh, the simple thing. So if that's the case, again, please email us in, report it. Uh, people report call 99 if they see it happening. Um, be yeah, uh, it, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. I am Feltham North Ward officer, so I'm DWO for Feltham North. And I've, this, is the, this is the first time I've heard the assembly hall being used as a, as a drug dealing. So, so if the intel can be passed to us, that would be fantastic. We have heard in and around um, Shakespeare Avenue, in the alleyways. We patrol there on a regular basis. Assembly halls. It's the first time for a very, very long time. Sure. The next time we receive anything, we can pass to you. Yes, Thank certainly. You. Thank I mean, you like I said, if people see it, please report it. If it's not, if they don't want to call 99, do it by 101 or go online. Um, the more you report, the more information we get, the better I can put the resources to where they need to be. Uh, and quite often, what happens is people always ask us, so "What are you doing about this problem?" And you go, "Well, what problem?" Because they've not actually told us. Um, so, like I always say, if you know, if you, if you see it, and you uh, please report it, that gives us a much better picture of actually what's going on. Thank you, Sergeant. Councillor Tuck, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is again um, around the drug dealing. I'm not going to say Feltham Assembly Hall, but the surrounding roads. Um, I have reported one of the road, and thank you so much to you. Increased patrolling there, and the activities have somehow reduced. But it's not completely um, gone. There is still activity. Uh, the drug dealers are becoming now creative. They, they see there is more uh, uh, police patrol. 
but uh, instead of loitering around the roads and uh, waiting for their other parties, they now come in, wait, park their cars, wait in the cars for the other party to come around, and then uh, the, their transaction takes place in a minute or two. Uh, and that's been reported, I have o already reported that, but uh, I haven't had any update about what are we gonna do to counter that. Without sort of specifics in terms of knowing like the index of the vehicles or uh, particular locations, it's a very difficult one to, to tackle. As you can imagine, you know, if you go, if they will do it in one area, we'll turn up that area, then they'll just drive away, go to the next area, go to the next area. Whilst we, from the, uh, like from the, the neighbourhood point of view, will patrol high vis, target particular individuals, particular areas. The best way that we can tackle drug dealing in general is by targeting not the low level, but the next next sort of rank up, if, if you know, and actually disrupt that particular line. Uh, and that's something that we work with the gangs unit, with the violent suppression unit, VCTF, when they come here, uh, and that side of it. And that a lot of that's done off of Intel uh, side of it. So it's not something that that we can do a great deal on, especially if it's in vehicles, because we don't have a vehicle. Uh, most of what we do is on foot and on bikes. Um, we will, obviously, if the intel's there to put together stuff, and if we see a particular pattern happening in a particular area, tar like we did, like, let's, let's target that particular area. But that side of it is difficult. It is difficult for us to do. Um, the other sort of thing in terms of it is, I think there's a great belief that everybody they see hanging around in a vehicle handing stuff out is drug dealing and that's not always the case um, I think there's a, a I'm not saying it's not I'm not saying they're not doing it but that's not always the case um, I know we have a particular issue with people smoking NOS canisters that's a big problem uh, and that uh, is something that needs addressing in law at the moment because it, it sits very much in the vague category around uh, the law around that, um, particularly in this area, have a lot of um, people that turn up and they drink and stuff in their cars. Obviously, we'll deal with them for drink driving, and just general ASB that they cause around that. But actual drug dealing in itself, um, where we'll target actual individuals, we can target individuals. But it's difficult when it's a spread. It one they come, they go, they come, they go, and it's very quick. If there is a pattern emerging, then we can target that, and we will target that. But again, relies on intelligence. If people see index, you know, number plates for the vehicles please record it and send that through to us, because obviously that's something that we can work on and work towards. Thank you. Councillor Nagra. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, hi, good evening. Hello. Okay, I just would like to say that I know you already, uh, police, doing a very, uh, you know, increase the patrols mm -hmm. around the area. It, like, if you just hear about the Feltham Assembly Hall, it's a more like a look in the cases, the people doing drug dealings. Just could you just increase the more patrols during the weekends, like a Friday night, Saturday night, then it, you can, like if you, no one reported you, so maybe is a more patrols during this area. Yeah, I mean, can yeah, they, they say the Felton North team will, will, will look at that and, and uh, they are out and about and, and, and in this area anyway because of the other areas they go through, they come past this bit every time. Um, we will have a look at and obviously it's something we will consider if, if the problem, if people report the problem, then we can get more resources to that problem. So yeah, we will patrol it, but if people see it, please do report it, and then we can work with, with the council as well as to whether we need any additional cameras or anything like that, which might also help. Unfortunately, a couple of the cameras that we did have here have been removed, a couple of the police ones that we had have been removed. That might be a case why it's, it's come back, but it's been too short a time for us to be able to determine that through the data. Oh, thank you. That's fine. If we receive anything, we'll just update yeah, you. Well. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. How's the clean? Um, you mentioned that there's been new cameras placed in Butts Farm. Yes. So I just wanted to ask, where have they been placed? Uh, the camera's gone back. It was the same. We had it there previously. It got removed, and we managed to get it back again. So it's just gone out uh, on the lamppost just opposite. It's Saxon Way, just opposite Norman House, effectively, where, the, where we're getting the most, most amount of reports. Uh, and issues that have been caused in that area. We've got one there. We've got one uh, by the um, McDonald's, um, just uh, on Bedfont Lane there. Uh, 
that's an, uh, an area that obviously gets a large amount of reports coming on. And then the third one is on the, um, is it Oriel Estate? Yeah, just on the junction of the Oriel Estate. Hounslow Road junction with the Oriel Estate as well. So we've got one there because that's that area there has come up with some ASB around there. Uh, we'd hope to get more. Unfortunately, all we could get was three. Um, but we will keep pushing if we get any extra things. These are police cameras that have been put in. These aren't council cameras. Um, so it's ones that we got additional funding and bid for and managed to get. No, this is a new one. This is one on Oriel State and Hounslow Road. So it's a new one that's just been not put on today. So not junction by the, of um, by the, the office. No, no, no. Just um, opposite. What's the name of the road? Uh, uh, next, uh, sorry, on the Hollands. Just by. So it's Oriel State on the Hollands. So it's on Hounslow Road. So it covers the Hollands. We can turn it down to send down towards the Oriel State around that one. There's a new one that's literally just gone up. That's not my question. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Go on. my question. <laughs> Take your time. No. Can I? Uh, I mean, my concerns are the actual number of officers that have been allocated to Hamworth Village Ward mm -hmm. or, or are actually active there. I mean, we had a meeting last week uh, with the residents. Uh, we had a, a PC support officer there, mm -hmm. um, but the other police officer was your colleague from Feltham North. Yep. No other police officer. No, that, that officer currently is at university. He's on one of the university programs. So. But, but this has been going on for nearly two years. Yeah. You know, I mean, okay. well, you know, it, it, it's, it's a nonsense. We, you, we, we've got all these areas we're talking about. I mean, I go every month with editor mm -hmm. and, and with the PC with support officer, who I have to say is, is, is very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I give him all the credit that, that he deserves. Um, and we, we go out and we, we, don't, we do the weapon search, um, but we're only scratching the surface. I mean, yeah. we're doing butts harm. There are other weapon dump areas over on South Road of the estate all around there. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're renowned for it. I mean, it, I, I, grew, I was born and bred in, the, in that ward and I grew up there and it was, it was, it was a, a, a weapons dump area then. So, yeah, you know, yeah. it's... I'd love to say, Councillor, that we're going to get a load of resources. We're not at the moment. And it's a simple answer. Um, they're obviously... The, co the commissioner has stated that he wants the largest ever neighbour policing, but he's also stated that's likely to take about four years to implement. Mm -hmm. um, the simple answer is we don't have enough people uh, just in the west area to cover everything that we need, just, just in, for general stuff. So we did a, an insight day yesterday to try and encourage people to come across the neighbourhoods and no one turned up. I mean, so are, it, are, there, are there many officers in Feltham that are... Uh, being taken away to go to college or to other we've got um, one who's on who's on the university program uh, and then uh, we had one so Bedfont at the moment has uh, Sally who's out um, and then we've got uh, Andy Davis who's coming back in he, he was acting up he's coming back uh, at the end of this month felt north is full felt west is full currently. Uh, unfortunately, the PCSO Mo Alias uh, injured his arm, um, so he. But he should be back in the next couple of months. Um, Hamworth Park, we've got two PCs, uh, no PCSO. I believe there is a new PCSO coming soon, but I, I haven't got a start date for them yet. Uh, and then Hamworth Village, because uh, we're covering one officer who's off on maternity, uh, so PC Lexi overalls on maternity. We can't fill her role because uh, she's still shown on that role as maternity so it's just down to the two she should be back by the end of august and the other officer who is ryan johnson should be back from uni, uh, uni by the end of this month so he should be back on the ward by the end of this month it's yeah, just I think that when, it's, when you're giving us you know these are the police yeah. officers and you're giving what you're giving us yeah. is, is what your yeah. uh, budget is for it's not what is actual what uh, what you're telling me now is we're very short on the ground yeah. with police officers. Uh, we, we're nowhere near our budget. Yeah. We, we are, I think, uh, coming in the next couple of months, we are three sergeants at uh, 18, 18 PCs short across just neighbourhoods on West Area, just on uh, Hounslow. Uh, it, like I said, when the new superintendent comes, 
uh, on the third. I'm sure his first priority is going to be, as as we've all been trying to do, to try and bolster those resources because it you know it makes it very difficult for us yeah. to, to do the stuff that we need to do. Just it's, it's difficult enough with two with a full with two PCs and a PCSO. It's difficult enough to make a dent into some of the problems we've got when you don't have that. The the teams are having to cover across as much as they possibly can, but it is difficult. Yeah, well, I, I, I sympathise with you that uh, somebody somewhere up the up the program needs a kick up the backside because you know. I think they've had it. <laughs> I think he's had it quite a lot, to be fair, uh, and I think we'll continue to get it quite quite a lot as well. Yeah, because yeah, I mean it's a ridiculous change. situation to talk about one PCSO covering Hamworth Park, uh, Hamworth Village Ward. Last it's, question. You know, we, we, we can't cover it with that. It's not possible. Thank you, officer. Okay. Thank you for taking that many questions. No, it's no problem. Did anyone want? Did okay. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, so I just wanted to briefly kind of fill in so what John was saying and in terms of what we do different from only working with the police. So we're trying to work with the members of the public and professionals um, to cater to specific areas, to come up with initiatives that would change any situation, any social behavior that's happening in the, on the estates, in the specific wards, in the specific areas, instead of doing something that might be not useful for, for, for one estate, but very useful for another one. So we have plenty of tools on our disposal of what we can do. And you can see it in the report, but just to mention a few. For example, in Feltham West, we have problem with the businesses who are complaining about social behavior. And we carry, we carry on an initiative started by Councillor Mitchell, and we're doing the visits every month with the local police to businesses to try to find out what's their feedback, what are the issues they're complaining about at the moment? How can we help? And we offer them also the quarterly meetings with the local councillors and with other providers. Thank you. And the, in terms of the Lewin Terrace, if I can just pick up what yeah. Councillor was saying. So this Lewin Terrace is the estate owned by uh, Catalyst Housing. And from the intelligence we gathered, the first time the unsocial behaviour started um, happening was last summer, over August and September. And we work very closely with Catalyst themselves, with the police, youth offending services. We even had um, in our working group the state enforcement team, who is specifically for housing, but they've agreed to come over just to advise Catalyst how to deal with that. And I need to say that we had a lot of successes. So what we've done, whenever the police couldn't reach out specific individuals because the threshold of what was happening was not big enough, then Catalyst would come over with tenancy enforcement actions. So within those two months, we didn't have any more complaints. Several people were served the warning letters from the, the, the landlord, several people were, were enforced against by the police. It started again just now, because the, the area over there is very attractive for hiding and for, for having those little gatherings. So we started receiving reports sort of last summer, last month, sorry. And we're trying to do this, the exactly same thing. So this is why we've teamed up with the police with Catalyst Housing to, to go on board with the local residents. When we don't want them, they're very proactive there, and they want to give us the information, that, but we, we don't want to encourage them to approach those individuals when they come over, take any photos. So we're trying to look at what resources can we provide to help them with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Um, any questions from her? Then members can ask later on. Item five on the agenda, we have open forum. And um, I'll take uh, questions from the members on the floor, from the public. Can you please introduce yourself? Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Sam and I've lived in Felton for over, it's nearly coming up 30 years. Um, anyway, this is my first time coming to uh, a public forum um, and I, to, be, to be honest with you, I'm very disappointed with it 
uh, because um, public speaking, we've got to wait. We've got to sit through this and wait um, to, you know, quarter to eight, nearly eight o'clock. I've done, you know, a lot of people have worked or this, this time is bad timing. And also I'm disappointed with uh, the lack of community here, um, which I have pointed to, you know, said to Emily, I'm very disappointed that uh, lots of community, um, you know, um, haven't been, you know, invited. Yes, you put it on your website. Yes, you've, you know, but not a lot of people, you know, know about this at all. Um, so, um, my question is, um, so for here, for Feltham Assembly Halls, um, what a lovely space. Um, and wouldn't it be fantastic to use for a, a community space? So, why isn't this used as a community space? Anybody answer that one? Thank you. Well, uh, I think, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, Elliot, please, if you can take this up. Thank you. Is it on? Yep. Um, uh, thanks, Chair. Just a couple of points that you've made there. The first one is about the area forum sort of itself and the time and, and the attendance. So whilst it is five to eight now, you're right, and we're in the open forum, we have obviously, we started here tonight at five o'clock, I think, um, in terms of the uh, market stall events where people can come and talk to the various teams within the council or our partners, police, community groups, etc., cetera, which is, a, which is a new approach to our area forums. If you'd come to an area forum, perhaps, uh, 18 months ago, it would have just been the formal meeting starting probably at 7 o'clock and there wouldn't have been those, those opportunities for the community to speak to both each other, uh, councillors informally and community groups. So we are on a journey with our area forums. We think that is better than it was in terms of only having the formal moments before. So there, And in terms of how many people have, have come tonight, this is, you know, again, if I took you back this is a good day, is it? Well, well it's just let, if you let me finish. Yeah. So I was going to say, if, we, if I took you back sort of 18 months, then it would be um, a lot less than this. Now, they're all very different. We had Heston last week, where there might have been over 100 people. Chiswick a few days before, which was similar. This is a bit lower today, but the last time at Feltham, it was higher again. So lots of things can play a part in, in why people... Um, come to the event. It might be the particular agenda. It might be because they've got things they want to ask councillors about. So we do try and promote, like you say. We're not forcing people to come. We're making them available. Um, but they're not the only way that people can get involved and, and, and talk to the council. They're just one option. Um, so we are going on a bit of a journey with our approach to engagement and consultation with residents. This is part of it. It is getting better. It's your first time tonight, so I understand you may have concerns, but I would urge you to, to stay with us um, and, and keep coming and engaging and hopefully we'll get there for you. Um, also, for the, all the local councillors, um, the constituencies, you're where you are, why are you not telling people about this? You know, because I, you know, why are they not engaging with, with their local and letting them know? Well, well, well I'm not going to answer for councillors, but yeah. from an officer, Councillor Bath, we have an, and you, you want to answer this? Or? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, was you going to answer about the well, uh, well, Feltham Assembly Halls? No, well, well I was actually right. going to say that yeah. you're right. So we're here in the Feltham Assembly Halls tonight. This isn't the only thing that goes on here. You know, I, I know different events that are going on here through the week. Uh, it's not full every day. Is it for the public? Is it for you can, So the public, can, the public can, can book this space. Community oh. groups can book this space. It's not, not oh, available. Really? Yep. So it's available for community, is it? Community it has are, been used by the community yeah. from many, many Thank years, you, and it's open to all the residents, so, so you can book it. So yeah. this is a community space? Absolutely, then. absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, because, uh, 
when I've looked into it, there, there doesn't seem to be a lot running here. No, it's um, open to public and you can book um, so you, online so and the information is there, yeah. If, if okay. you want to, one of the officers can give the information right. afterwards. Thank you. Can I, sorry, can I also ask, um, I know on a Friday, this is always booked on a Friday, mm -hmm. um, is that paid for or is that... You know, um, I'm not said. sure about how much it is, Could but I it's, it's a, a reasonable. Freedom, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, for that. Yeah. Um, sorry, going back to community buildings, um, I'm very disappointed with the lack of community space. Is this your last question? Yeah. Uh, well, I have. Because got we a few. have. No, I'm. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. Because we have many well, people who waiting. Can I, um, Address these two. Well, you can drop an email to myself, okay. um, yeah, and then we can look into oh. it. But uh, um, yeah, because we have say, other members of public who are waiting yeah. from long. Thank you. Okay, but um, pass a call. Two years, um, it's been sitting there. Um, it's nothing's running in it. Why? Does anybody know? Elliot. Just. Thank Just you. briefly, oh, I can't. Back to, I, I, back to me, yeah. I can't comment on individual uh, community venues tonight, but what I can tell you is that there is going to be a report going to the council's cabinet in May of this year. Um, so it's a public report that any, anyone. Is this the community assets, which is three years well, outstanding? It's coming in May. Um, Coming in May? This, what, May this year? May, or? May this year. There's a report. Like I say, if you just let me finish. Do, there are, do you know the date in May? I, the, the council's cabinet date in May. I haven't got it to hand. But sorry, I Elliot. Uh, do you mind taking um, the questions? Um, and because all um, many members are mate, waiting from. I yeah, understand yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Chair, I'm happy to leave yeah, it there. Please. And I'll speak to you. Separately. Please, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any more questions from the she public? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I live down Victoria Road. Yeah, the police, yeah, they've helped us quite a lot because I live in Batelli Place. Now, last year, yeah, we've had, like, contractors doing work. Now, again, this summer, we have one resident who will come out, the council know about it, the police, places of people, this lady knows that you'll have a man who will go and visit his sister he will shit outside. He will urinate outside. But again, this happens in the summer. Again, like we said, we had work what was doing out, doing cladding and all that. So of course you had workers, so it never happened. She keeps getting told if he carries on, they'll be evicted. Nothing happens. Also, another one is, with all the chaos what's going down the high street, can't they move put, uh, the one-way system so it goes the other way, so it'll take a lot of the traffic away? So if, you, if you're coming down over the railway station from the high street, turn left and go down Victoria Road, it'd be quicker than everyone going round in the traffic lights. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Yeah, Emily. Is it Ray? Yeah. So Ray from Friends of Fulton Green. Oh, Thank you. Are we on? Yes. Right. Uh, Ray Edwards, I'm principally here um, on behalf of the Friends of Felton Green, but there are other groups here, like the Friends of Hamworth Park House, who share the same concerns that we have, and it's in relation to the uh, Park Ranger Service. There's lots of uh, information out there which you may be correct or incorrect, um, that the Park Ranger Service is going to be discon discontinued, um, what the simple question I would ask the councillors, I have tried to get information about the park ranger service. Um, I have no definitive answer. I would ask all of you, can you please answer this one very simple question? 
Is the park ranger service being discontinued? Well, then I would follow that up with why? Because it's considered by quite a few people in this hall. Um, Me included. But I can tell you that it is be, it's being discontinued and it's finance. So it's purely a, a financial? It was, a, it was only a temporary um, a thing being bought in. And the money was there for, I think, 12 months, maybe 18 months. But that was, that was the limit of it. What we're trying to do is to try now to find a, a, a long-term alternative to the park rangers. But that's going to take some time. And, and you know, we're is, losing money. Money's being taken away from the council by the government all the time. We yeah, just don't I, have the I, money. I would accept that. But is there not a danger that in this interim period that the parks and green spaces will go back to their horrible, um, unwelcome, site, uh, unwelcome places because they are not being, for want of a better word, policed? The park rangers are regarded or were regarded as an asset. I, I regard them as an asset. I can't say what's going to happen other than what I've just told you. You know, um, yes, there is attempts to look at, we've been assured, as I'm a backbench councillor, and I've been assured that there are, there are things looking at replacing the park rangers because, yes, they were successful. I had to say that in saying that they only attended Hamworth Village for the last month. We only had them for one month. Um, we didn't have them for the rest of the time, but we're not um, supported like... Hamworth Park House and all around there in the same way. So, you know, I, I, I've got a bigger butt to com complain about. Ray, as um, uh, we discussed before the meeting, that uh, I'm waiting to hear from the officers, so um, yeah. uh, in the well, next few I've days I'll come back to you on that. Yeah, I've got lots of supplementary questions here regarding that, which I've agreed with yourself and Emily that I will I can, for forward on to you. Yeah. And we will hopefully get this issue Okay, resolved. please go ahead. Thank you very much. One second. Just really quickly, any councillors using the mic, please, please speak really closely because the couple over here are really struggling to hear the mics round the circle. Thank you so much. Can't chair that one. Nabila's got the mic there. My colleague's got the mic. Oh, thank you. Please thank introduce you. yourself. Hello, thank my you. name's Gideon. I've lived in Hanworth Park for 51 years, coming up. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't know about the park rangers being reduced. I, I saw them not long ago. I'm in Hanworth Park, in Natural Park, most, most days of the week. I'd got, anyway, uh, it was a great, it was a very positive move that they were there. That's not what I wanted to say initially, though. Uh, two issues. You, Liz, I wondered what your, as a council, what your attitude to that is. A lot of people where I live drive, we need our cars. That's in Hanworth Park, and we, a lot of us only drive 2,000 miles a year. We're hardly, you know, contributing to the ozolayan layer, whatever, um, destruct, destruction of the ozone layer. Um, and it's going to affect a lot of people who do drive a lot more business, self-traders, I know. They're not exactly millionaires. Um, that's the one point, that's the first point I wanted to add. Second, Hanworth Park House. Uh, Following on from what that lady said, the first one that spoke, I had no idea about the current planning application um, until someone in Tudor Court happened to put a flyer through our doors. And uh, I don't see where the infrastructure is for 300 new properties, where, th where that's going to come from. Uh, but I'm more concerned about you, Liz, if you... I'm so sorry, that. we cannot discuss uh, planning applications here. Okay, yeah. fair enough. I didn't know that. You. Okay. Euless? Well, we don't have an answer. Um, well, we can come back to you on Euless. Because it's not five months, ago. It's five months to go. I've, I believe the lead of the council was initially against it. Seema Malhotra has made okay. negative noises about it. We have a lead member, Councillor Bath here. She's able to. Okay. 
Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the cabinet and, I, um, and my responsibility is children, families and learning, but I'm happy to just give you a quick update on the ULES. Um, we have noted some of the concerns that have been raised by the residents and um, we have written to the Mayor of London to um, kind of to, to, to sort of make him aware of some of these concerns that have been raised by ULES and you should be able to see that letter on the council website, I think I think it is there, isn't it? From what I, yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously, we want to. Um, we we know that pollution is a, a a great impact, a negative impact on on the health of of our residents, and we want to make sure that we do provide a very safe. Um, and less polluted environment for our uh, communities and we want to promote uh, sort of safe travel and active travel but we do note the concerns that have been raised and we have actually written to the mayor uh, to kind of put some mitigation in place that will actually um, help residents who need to get uh, to dispose of their cars in terms of um, making sure that they're ULES compliant. We've asked for better infrastructure around travel and we've asked for uh, better support around the scrappage scheme as well. Government and more government money of course yeah, towards the scrappage scheme because that's incredibly important. Thank you. Thank you so much Councillor Bath. Councillor Mitchell. Yeah, just to say, it's, it's very unfortunate we have a Conservative government and a Labour mayor, but that's the reality. Politics does take place in these things, and we had to keep the tubes and the buses going during the pandemic, and uh, unfortunately Boris Johnson wanted a, a price for that, and I think we, we've got to, some people see this as a way that Sadiq Khan's getting the money back, but it's not. He's actually doing it for the benefit of all Londoners, and if you actually look at the data, it does affect people. It does affect lots of people who, and it contributes to their, them actually ending up dying, I think, when you look across the piece. But I had a, I had a meeting with um, the local MP, and some people are in the room tonight, and certain uh, things were raised, including the mitigations that um, Councillor Bath has just mentioned. Quite a lot, the local demographics of people here, self-employed people. Um, it's the same in this part of London. It is right over on the other side, in Dagenham. It's not the same issues that people face. And we are putting together these, uh, these questions, which we have to put to the mayor. That's all we can do. Um, we don't oppose ULES. I think ULES going out to the Greater London boundary in the end is the right idea. But we have to take into account local need as well. And we will make those points. We will make them as forcibly as possible to get the best deal for our people here. And I can see Marks over there and others who very kindly contributed some very thoughtful and creative ways which we could do that. So let's go through that process and do the best we can with it. Thank you. Thank you, Clark Mitchell. Um, yeah, hello everyone. Um, I'm Simran and I've lived here pretty much my whole life. And I'd like to bring to the council's attention um, the shops just, just on the side of um, Felton Assembly Hall. And just about the general state of the area. So I'm talking about the advertisement, um, sort of billboards. Um, there are cash points that are really not used um, and the advertisement boards haven't been replaced. Um, I don't know since when, um, but I posted about this on the Felton community website or the Facebook page and it received a lot of, let's say, reactions and responses about, you know, the general lack of disregard from whoever has to maintain the area, as well as you know cars that park on the actual pavement um, just in front of the shops. Like I walk from the station to my house every day um, just to get the train and I usually avoid that side of the road just because I don't want to walk there. There are cars par uh, like just parked um, blocking the pavement and it just seems like a bad environment to be in. So I'd like to know why the billboards aren't maintained, uh, why they're still broken, and why they haven't been removed if they're not of any use to the community. If anything, they should be used to sort of advertise community events rather than fast food outlets. Councillor Akram, he's the ward councillor for that area. Thank you, Simran, for coming for the area forum. And I already reported the, these two, two things, and the card machines, and also is a board as one. 
I think the officer has been replying me and they, they wanna sort out in, you know, I think next month, definitely they wanna remove it, they wanna contact with the company, which they have already put the machine, ATM machine there, and they wanna remove that as soon as possible. So you the will one see. that's blocking the pavement, not the one next to the actual corner shop. Yeah, um, but I think it's just a problem, it's just a, it's just a point of regenerating the area. I mean, there's been a great job done with the, with the Hauser Bridge, but yeah. we need more. Okay, thank you. Simran, on this one, if you want to drop an email to your local ward councillors and... Yep, yeah, I'm in can... contact with Councillor Tuck yeah. quite often. Okay. Any more questions? I can't see any hands up, so... Okay, um, another one from Simran. Yeah, please go nobody ahead. nobody else would like to... Um, the Heathrow Airport noise insulation scheme um, expired in June 2022, and I've tried to contact them saying um, I'd like to have to apply for some you know, funding for compensation for new windows for my house. Um, and they said that they would have a new scheme up and running by early 2023, but it's coming to the end of March and there isn't anything. So I'd like the council to get in contact with Heathrow Airport or BAA and find out when that's going to happen. Okay, thank you, noted. Item six on the agenda. We have Age UK presentation by Mark Townis. I'll use that good and proper. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'll give a short presentation. Um, as an ex-teacher, um, in case you fall asleep, um, I've actually got a printout of what I'm going to say and what I'm going to abbreviate. So if you drop off or you want to recap on what I've said, there's copies here. Councillors, I believe you have copies of these. If not, you'll have to pay attention. We do, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just a, uh, a quick background to um, Age UK moving into the Feltham area. Um, in 2018, um, we moved from the centre of Hounslow and we're now at Southfield Community Centre. Um, it was a choice we were not given, but we took. And um, we've since made the premises at Southfield Community Centre uh, much more amenable. Um, one of the things we did, because to be quite honest, um, Age UK, centrally based, previous to that, was based in Brentford, we didn't know this end of the borough very well. I did, I'd lived here 50 years, but um, as an organisation, we didn't. Um, so we were funded by one of the Heathrow funds to conduct what's called a community audit. Um, the community audit was successful. It actually levered in from the lottery, it actually levered in five years funding for us to work within the local area. Um, not just with older people. We made the, the, the strong case that here was a community center that was for the whole community. So although we have a comprehensive program, which there's copies here, or if you are IT savvy, you can go to Age UK Hounslow and you can look up our activity planner and see what's there. Um, you can also go there and see the community audit that we published in um, 2019. Well, we all know what happened since 2019. The five years funding we got from the lottery um, was significant, but it had to change, and the lottery were very cooperative. They've really allowed us to turn the program around because our plan was to go out into the community, not only to fill up the center, but to work with other community groups and see ways in which we could strengthen them. And the, the strengthening was for the three villages. It was for Hamworth, it was for Feltham, and it was for Bedfont. And it was all aged communities we were funded to work with. Um, obviously, with the pandemic, that didn't happen. We were able to redirect our funds, and the lottery agreed to that. But they've now come to the point saying, well, actually, we think we need you to do what we really paid you for. 
So the next three years is for us to employ an outreach worker to actually go out into the communities, um, see what's happening, what's not happening. And I picked up very much about this disconnectedness of communities in the area. And I think this could be a powerful part for making that happen. Um, I'd like to give you in detail, not the report, because actually that's online, you can look at it. Um, what I would like to give you is actually what we would see that group doing, uh, sorry, that appointed person doing. Um, first of all, it had to be the agreement of our trustees, because our trustees were there as Age UK trustees. And they made the decision that the Southfield Community Centre would be for the whole community support, not just for older people. It would be there for other activities that took place. If you look at our program, you'll see that we're already fairly full. Um, for example, every evening from 5 o'clock till 12 o'clock, we're a crisis centre for MIND. So by booked appointments or by um, people actually calling in who are experiencing a crisis, there are MIND officers there to work with them. Um, we have faith groups who use us over the weekend. Um, we concentrate our older people's activities Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we try and open out for all age activities on the Thursday and Friday. Um, as I say, we had that successful application. So what would we expect of our officer and the other members of staff who support him? Right, maximize the use of our premises. We want to fill up. It's not free. We have to turn the lights on every day and check the number of toilet rolls. Sorry. Um, you know, it'd be really nice, and I've heard quite keenly what people have said about, you know, affordability of premises. Where's the community premises? Well, there's a really nice one there. We were lucky. We had support from the council to make it a bit better, but we had corporate support to make it much better. If you haven't been, please come along. It's a really nice building. It's a friendly place to be. Um, we also convinced the lottery that we would have major partners to work with. Well, Council, you're a major partner. Um, the health service is a major partner. Uh, I'd like to make them a bit more major at the moment, but uh, we're working on it. Um, also, we recognize there are other organizations in the area that are really working hard with a similar idea to us to strengthen the community. Reach Academy would be one that we see as a major partner to work with. Um, they have an offshoot called Reach Foundation that does wonderful work, and we're there to support them. We've seen a bit of, we've heard a bit of what they did tonight with their choir. That was inspired by Reach, so thanks for them for that. There's another organization called Generations Active, and that's funding that's coming from the London Mayor, it's coming from Nike Sports, and it's coming from an international organization called Laureus Sports, and they have specifically the west end of the borough, they've got a funding program. At first, it looked like sport for young people. We put pressure on gently to say, couldn't it be activities for all ages? And that's why we now call it Generations Active, because the funding is there to support all age groups. We're still wrestling with that one, because some of the, shall we say, the powers that be outside the borough see it mainly for young people. I applaud that, but I'm trying to bend it towards all ages. Um, and I think I've said about the stronger links with, with statutory bodies. Um, members of the police force have now left. That's our weakest link. Um, we need to work on that. That is work in progress. Um, local schools, if you read our community audit, they were a bit of a missing gap, so we really have a need to concentrate the local schools. It was only the other day when I visited Marjorie Kinnan, I realized as well as being an incredible place that served the special needs of pupils, it had good community space. And it had a member of staff who said, why don't you come in? Why don't you use it? For the next week, I went to Bedfont Sports, um, nearly in Hatton, you know, you could almost think it's not in Hounslow. It's, it's almost falling into the airport. Um, and the manager of that, he said, you know, we've got lots of older folk in the area. They could come for a coffee morning. So I went into the bit that I have to do. How much would you charge for us to use? He said, no, come free. Come free. He said, we just want that space used up. He said, I've got all my bookings during the evenings and during the weekends. 
He said, it's empty space. I said, but if we did an activity class, you'd have to eat it. He said, yeah, I'll switch the eating on. And I, I sort of went away feeling a bit richer than when I walked in. It was great stuff. Um, I'll come to the last piece, and I turn gently to the council, um, and I turn gently to the officers and say, there's one thing I feel is a missing trick. Um, great that we've got this. Great that we now have an hour or two beforehand to mingle and look at what's on offer. I feel we need um, a residence area group to feed into this. I worked in other parts of London where we've made it possible. We've actually had, um, if you like, a forum for an area that actually had a community input. And I think that's so important because I think um, great to hear the questions that have been raised tonight. Great to hear some of the answers and know that some of the other answers are pending and need a bit of time. But I think if we actually had a space for residents to get together and actually work out their needs, sometimes they need that space on their own. Um, and I think, and they have a right to call in someone who's an expert in that field. Um, that would be the bit I'd sort of plug at the end of my little talk. Um, I'm quite happy to take questions about Age UK. Um, I want to stop there, if I may. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a lovely question. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for a lovely presentation. Um, lots of information about Age UK. We have leaflets. Okay, I, I think that's for Feltham Fee. Okay. Uh, any questions from any members or public for Mark? Yeah, Councillor Bath. Um, not a question, just to thank you for presenting that. That was really great. I just wanted to say that I did actually, um, myself and other councillors have been to Southall Community Centre and we did love it. And one of the discussions that we did have with one of your workers, and I don't want to sort of volunteer people, our, our, all of our councillors here today, is that we would do a joint surgery possibly for some of the residents there amongst all of us, because I think that would be a lovely way for us to kind of um, get to know more, of, uh, forge more links with the residents that you, you know, in, in terms of hearing their views. So if you're open to that, we're, we're happy to we're do that. We're wide open for that. Okay. Yeah, cool. really Thank are. you very well, we'll much, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Item seven on the agenda, we have petitions. So the first one is Ali between Page Manor Drive and Burlington Close. We have the petitioner here, Tracy Westlake. We have the petitioner here, or no? Anyone from Page Manor to present the petition? Okay, Rob. Hi, yeah, uh, Rob Heslop, uh, Traffic, Transport and Parking. Um, so the, the, the request to close the um, footpath between uh, Pates Manor and Burlington Drive. Sorry, apologies, I've got the road names incorrect. Sorry, oh, that's better. Um, sorry, so the the, uh, the footpath is public uh, public highway. So, in order to close that route, there is a formal legal process to, to go through under the Highways Act. So uh, uh, that process involves. Um, so it would it would be taken to a, a decision would be taken by magistrates' court, and in order for them to make a to 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 agree to close that route. The, the footpath would either have to be um, declared that it's it's unnecessary as perhaps the very defined legal terms that would, it's unnecessary to be public highway. So, generally speaking, that means that there would be no reason for anyone to use it, or that there is an alternative 
more convenient route that would allow people to to travel between the two ends of that that path. I think our view is that it would be difficult to demonstrate that at magistrates court without evidence that it's not being used because it's a so it's a very narrowly defined legal terms and legal process that we need to go through. So it's not, it, it, unfortunately, it can't be just a case of we'd like to close it for, for, for whatever reason, for, for, for personal safety in this case, and, and crime uh, reasons for, for it's been used by uh, involved in crime. So that's, that in itself is not a, a reason for us to, to, to be able to close it, because it would, be, as I said, there's that very specific legal process to go through. So I think that, that would be my initial response, and I think obviously we're aware that there's development taking place on uh, at the southern end of the, um, the, the, the path, which might change the perception of the, the path and who uses it and how it's used. So I think our, our advice would be to wait and see what happens as a result of that development before then taking another view to see whether it, it actually is unnecessary. And I think, let's say, it, it's, it's normally it's a very difficult um, it's difficult to, 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 say, to say that something's not unnecessary, I think is, and I think that, that would be our advice, that it would be difficult, difficult to do. But happy to take any questions about that. Councillor Siddhi. Chair, have you got a copy of the petition? It's online. Okay, thank you. We would need to do a consultation to, to see. Councillor Bath. Yeah, um, I think I vaguely remember the petition. I think it just asked for the footpath to be closed. But I wondered whether you had any information about footfall and how well it or how you know, little it's used or antisocial behaviour. Do you have anything uh, around that at the moment? I or, don't. Are we, but we are monitoring that, presumably. If we, um, I don't believe it's being monitored, but it's, um, I think it's actually closed at the moment because of the, the, develop, the redevelopment that's taking place. Um, but I think we would want to see... Again, as it comes back to this legal terminology, and I think if we want to, if, if, we, if we wanted to take it forward and, and demonstrate to the to the magistrates that it's unnecessary, I think it would have we'd have to say that there's no one using it. So, sorry, yeah. So I think we would have to say that there's no one no one using it, and, and any ob if someone is using it, we'd have to put in post notices at either end of it, and there's a statutory 28 day period for ob people to, to make objections. So if someone were to be using it, they can object. Um, if there's um, services that are run underneath it, um, like, uh, gas or electricity or telecoms, then they can ob object, and we you have to resolve all of those objections before we could um, before we could take it forward. Any supplementary? Sorry, Council just to Mark. follow up, will you be writing to the petitioners with with that um, response? Uh, yeah, we can. Okay. I'll talk to my colleagues. That, and it's important to be able to explain that. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll relax. Uh, thank you, Rob. Yes, you know, from Burlington development, only when the people start moving in, because that alleyway will be used for them to go to Hatton Cross. So only then we can realize, we can we can assess how much it will be used, because at the moment nobody is using it, and we should not close that. It's just my personal views about that, because there will be residents moving in and then whoever has to go to Hatton Cross Station. So that's a shortcut from, from, from there to come to Hatton Door. So I think we should monitor afterwards. Yeah, and I, think, and, and I think that's what we would like to do, just to see how that development, that when it's occupied, actually changes, if it changes the use of that footpath, because it does provide a route down to Staines Road as well, where obviously you've got the shops and, and bus routes as well. So. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. So we have some update. Um, there was a petition uh, presented previously about a cricket pitch at Feltham Park, and I think we have uh, the petitioner as well. Welcome, Akil. Um, so it's an update from Tony, uh, and uh, Wendy will read it out to you. Just read it out to you. It's from Tony Stevens, um, who's the interim commissioning manager 
um, in leisure services. Okay, so the installation of a non-turf cricket pitch on the Glebelands area of Feltham has been agreed in principle, and we have an indicative location agreed. We're now progressing to the final design stage for the exact location, and we have received indicative quotations for the works. Once these have been finalised, we can progress to the implement implementation stage for the pitch, which we expect will be late spring or summer. Please direct any further inquiries on this issue to me, and I'll respond accordingly. So can we expect it by uh, early June? Is, is that what well, it's late spring and summer, so I'll update you on that anyway, Thank yeah, you. at a later stage, sometime next week. Thank you. Item 8 on the agenda, any other business? I've not been informed of uh, any urgent business, but... Um, okay, none. Uh, item 9, date of the next meeting will be 15th of June. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, I will update on the location then. Yeah, because uh, Councillor Bart, she, she had on a diary um, Feltham Libraries. Yeah, I think, yeah, can you yeah, check she that? Went there. Because I've, I had a different venue. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys, sorry. that goes out. The invites to councillors come from the class. Yeah, so that for next meeting. time. Sorry. sorry about that, Councillor Bart. Thank you, everyone, uh, for coming, attending. Okay, Councillor Tuck. Uh, thank you, you Chair. Um, I just wanted to say about the location, because some of the councillors had a, a different location. Uh, like um, Councillor Joseph, he reached to Feltham Library first, and then he called me, there was nobody there. Um, and uh, many of the residents also don't know about the locations, there, there, there are confusions. So if we can advertise a little bit to, to the residents about the location as well. It's on website and everywhere else it, it is, but I think it's it on, the, on the council councillor's diary, it has come up as uh, the different location, but um, Emily, please. Just, just want to say in terms of promotion, anyone is more than welcome to come out and fly with me. Like, I try my best to get this out in the community along with the councillors or the community Absolutely. members. So yeah, please, you're more than welcome to come out and fly with me. You're more than welcome to, you know, I send, I send it to your WhatsApps. I know I do, Councillor Tack. Um, I think there's been some confusion maybe with the clerks and the location, so we'll pick up on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you for all the hard work to every of you and all the other officers. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Chair.